Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Updates. I'm Rod Wortham filling in this week for Brittany Lung. There was plenty of action last week so let's get right to it with our Race Face Drivers. We start off with Sam Mayer who was pulling double duty over the weekend in both the NASCAR k and Pro Series East and the ARCA Racing Series. We start at Dover International Speedway and the Monster Mile, where the young 16-year-old was attempting to become the youngest driver in history to win a NASCAR championship. All Sam Mayer had to do to clinch the 2019 KNN Pro Series East Championship was take the green flag. But after being quickest in practice and qualifying and on the pole, he led all but two laps to close the season with a win and secure the championship. Sam only finished outside the top 10 once in 12 races and is now the 2019 NASCAR k and Pro Series East Champion. Let's now head to Lucas Oil Raceway in Indianapolis for the Arca Hers Potato Chip 200. Sam qualified 11th and then brought home a third place finish in the rain shortened event. Up next for Sam, NASCAR Gander Outdoor Truck Series at Martinsville Speedway on October the 26th. Jesse Love was at Jacksonville Speedway for two nights of racing in the Power Eye National Midget Series in his 97K Keith Coons Toyota. On night one, Jesse finished third in his heat race, started 14th, and finished 12th in the A Main. On Saturday, he had another third place finish in his heat and brought home a 12th place finish in the A Main. Up next for Jesse, Power Eye Midgets at Belle Claire Speedway on October 11th and Southern Illinois Speedway on October 12th. Joe Valento was at La Crosse International Speedway in West Salem, Wisconsin in his Midwest Truck Series. Nitro Lubricant Arden Mills Chevrolet. Joe qualified second, started the feature in 10th due to the invert, and ended the night with another top 10 finish coming home in eighth place. Up next for Joe, the season championship at Dells Raceway Park on October 19th. Joey East was at Madera Speedway for the season ending championship night in the 5150 Junior Late Model Series. Joey qualified fourth, but drew the number one starting position for the main event. Joey led the first 40 laps, but lost the lead on a restart after the break. He and Seth Wise swapped positions that included a door-to-door -door battle for the last four laps and ended up second. With one of the closest finishes in Madera Speedway history, only 21 one thousandths of a second difference at the finish line. Check out this video clip for the last four laps. I'm watching because he's had to do this a lot tonight. He's seen Seth Wise get that run going in. If you get into one, good. He sees that run out of turn number two, and that is a big slingshot. And I think Joey is uh, thinking that he wants to replicate what Seth oh, Wise man, been doing. Oh man, Wise did not get going very well. They made no. contact. That could be all she wrote. Wise sails it in there. East goes wide. Slingshot out of turn two. The Beast, Joey East, staring down his sixth win of the year and the 2019 title. Wise is going to fight one more mile of racing here at Madeira. Yes, these guys uh, racing hard together. Seth Wise trying to get his first ever win in the Junior Late Mall Series. Can he take down Joey huh. East? We said the only driver in the field that has won this year. Oh, it was almost Wise with the lead. It will be East by just the smallest of margins. Wise has nothing to lose. East has nothing to lose. They've got a comfortable advantage on the field. They're going all the way to the wire. Only one more lap of junior lane model racing in 2019. And it doesn't matter which way they finish. The championship ends with Joey East leading Seth Wise in the championship. We're going to go down into turn three and four. We're going to take this thing to Wise, Stephen Blakesy. It's Wise on the inside. East on the oh outside. Oh, my goodness. To the yeah, line. I think it was Wise. Wise, Seth Wise takes the win. Gets his first career victory by 21 one thousandths of a second. He wins the race. Joey East wins the championship. Wow, what a finish. Congratulations, Joey, on your 2019 championship. However, Joey was not done for the night as he jumped right into his pro late model for the Nut Up Short Track Shootout, 150 lap, $10,000 to win feature. Joey qualified 18th in the field that had 43 cars trying to make the main event. 
At the drop of the green flag, Joey started to work his way through the field and was setting in sixth at the 100 lap break. Joey remained in sixth until lap 131 when he moved into fourth. Several late cautions had Joey restarting on the inside, losing a couple of positions on each restart before finally coming home with a seventh place finish. Up next for Joey, Pro Late Models at All American Speedway on Saturday. Let's now get up to speed with our race face next drivers. Bryce Bazanson was at Yakima Speedway in Yakima, Washington for the 32nd Fall Classic this past weekend in his number seven Jefferson Racing Crowd Strike Chevrolet. Bryce qualified 12th and was running in 10th at the 100 lap break. Then on the restart, he had an issue with the rear axle that ended his night. Jake Bowman also saw action in Madeira Speedway on Saturday for the 5150 Junior Late Model Championship race. Jake topped the charts in the second round of practice and qualified fifth for the race. Jake ran in the top four and was setting in fourth place at the 40 lap break. On the restart, Jake took over the third and stayed there until getting hit by another car with only 10 laps to go. And he had to restart in 16th, but he worked his way up to a 10th place finish. Jake finished his rookie season fourth in championship points. And up next for Jake, Carter at Speedway in the Inex Legends Asphalt National on October the 19th. Grant Thompson was at Madera Speedway as the winner of the Junior Late Model Challenge Camp and made his first start in the 5150 Junior Late Model Series for Nate Clower Motorsports. Grant topped the speed charts in the first practice session in his number 54 West Coast Stock Car Hall of Fame Chevrolet. Grant qualified in eighth and ran in the top six for most of the race and had moved into fourth position with 10 to go before a late restart shuffled him back to six and that's where he finished. I think everyone was quite impressed with the young Mobile Alabama driver for his first start in a late model. William Cox was at Anderson Speedway for two nights of racing in the INEX Legend Car Series. On night one, he qualified third for the A-Main and was in second before getting hit from behind and then hit by another car, sending him into the pits for repairs. The Farbo Motorsports team was able to get him back on track and he was still able to bring home a fourth place finish. On Saturday night, Will was second on the speed charts in practice and brought home a fourth place finish in the A main. Up next for Will, Carteret Speedway and the INEX Legends Asphalt Nationals are on October the 19th. The Red Army was at Port City Raceway in Tulsa, Oklahoma for two nights of racing. On Friday night, Justice Sokol raced his restricted 600 where he started ninth in his heat race and finished sixth, transferring him into the B main where he started on the pole and stayed there for the win. Justice then started 16th in the A main, drove his way to a top 10 finish in seventh. On night two, he started fourth in his heat and finished first giving him a sixth place starting position in the A main. But an incident with another car damaged his throttle, ending his night. Colby Sokol raced his unrestricted wing 600, where he started ninth in his heat race and finished ninth, transferring him to the B main, where he finished 10th. In his non-wing 600, he finished seventh in the heat race, started 12th in the B main and finished seventh. On Saturday night, he raced his wing 600 in the A class finishing seventh in his heat and 10th in the B main. In his non-wing 600, he won his heat race and finished 17th in the feature. Up next for the Red Army, Sweet Springs Raceway on Saturday. Cassidy Hines was back in her Snap-on Tools Pro Truck at Colorado National Speedway for dual main events on Saturday. And she had a special guest in her pits. IndyCar driver Robbie Unser made the trip to Colorado to show some support and give some assistance on the setups. Cassidy qualified 12th and finished 10th in the first main event, but on the start of the second main, she got into some speedy dry that was left on the track due to an earlier accident that sent her into the wall, ending her night. The truck had major damage. Cassidy was a little shaken up, but she was okay. Race face drivers that did not race this past weekend, but will see action this weekend include 
Anthony Alfredo will be back in the NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series at Talladega Super Speedway on October the 12th. Sheldon Creed will also be at Talladega Super Speedway in the NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series on Saturday. Brian Henderson will be at Road Atlanta for the IMSA Michelin Pilot Series on October the 11th. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up on raceface.tv on demand. Don't miss Race Face Spotlight next Thursday at 10 o'clock Eastern time as we visit with micro sprint driver Haley Constant. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your community. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We'll be back with you next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race weekend. I'm Rod Wortham, thanks for watching. <laughs>